The next and last probability distribution that we're going to be looking at is called the hypergeometric distribution. And um, let's talk about some key characteristics. Just like the binomial distribution, um, we have two possible outcomes in a hypergeometric distribution, success or failure. Also, the um, trials in this case are dependent. So this is the first time we're seeing a dependent outcome. Examples of these are when choosing the starting lineup for a game. A coach obviously has to choose a different player for each position. Also, if you're dealing a deck of cards from a standard deck, there can be no repetitions. So in each situation, each selection reduces the number of items that could be selected in the next trial. So the probabilities in these trials are dependent. Okay, so let's get right into it. In a hypergeometric distribution, you find the probability of an event occurring X number of times in our dependent trials. Probability in a hypergeometric distribution is found by this equation right here. And um, all that represents is the event occurring X times after R dependent trials. So R is going to be the number of dependent trials that you have. And um, A represents the number of successful outcomes out of a total of N possible outcomes. So we have some new variables here. When we're looking at expected value, where it's the um, same variables as above, so R times A divided by N, where E of X, your expected value, represents the number of successes that you would expect in R dependent trials. So this will make more sense once we do an example. So in example one, it says, find the probability of choosing four green marbles from a bag with seven green marbles and three red marbles. So let's list our variables here. So your x is going to be how many times the event is occurring. So we're look for, um, we're choosing four green marbles out of the bag. So we're choosing four marbles. Um, we want them to be green. So your r is going to be how many success trials. So that's four. That's what we're looking for. N is your total possible outcomes. So that's ten. Since you have ten marbles in the bag, so seven green and three red. And what else do we need? Our A value is going to be 7, because those are your options for a successful outcome. And a successful outcome means choosing a green marble. Okay, so now let's go ahead and plug it in. So P of 4, that's P of X, is A, which is 7, choose X times... So n minus a, so 10 minus 7, choose r minus x, in this case they're the same, so 4 minus 4 over um, n, which is 10, and r is 4. Okay, so I'm just going to rewrite this, 7 choose 4 times 3 choose 0 over 10 choose 4 and you can go ahead and put that in your calculator you'll get 1 sixth which is about 16 percent. Part B asks how many green marbles would you expect to get if you take four marbles from the bag of seven green marbles and three red marbles. So we're looking for our expected value and that is R, which is 4, times A, 7, over N, which is 10. And that gives you 2.8. So what does that mean? It means you would expect, on average, to choose almost three green marbles. In example two, find the probability distribution for the number of men on a team of three chosen from eight men and seven women. So distribution means we're looking for a whole chart. Before we start that, let's name our variables. So how many choices do we have in total? That's our n. That's the easiest one to find. 15, right? We just want to add up the eight men and seven women. And 
What are we looking for? What's success? Um, number of men. So A would be eight. And how many are we choosing? Three. So that's your R value. Since they're asking for a distribution, we're going to use our chart. And our X value is going to range from 1, 0 to 3. So using the formula from before, we're going to get... Okay, so now let's graph this. Okay, so now looking at your graph, it's increasing and then decreasing right before we've chosen the last man um, from our group. So it makes sense because as you're decreasing your sample size, you have more of a chance of um, selecting a male. But right before we get to three, you notice that the probability drops. And this is the first time we're really looking at decreasing our sample size because it we're looking at dependent trials, which means that we're not replacing the item. So in a binomial distribution, we would have replaced it. In this case, we're not replacing. For the second part of this problem, we're asked how many men would you expect to be chosen on the team of three? So we're looking our, for our expected value. And again, that's R times A over N. supposed to be an N, and that's just 3 times 8 over 15 total people or options, and that gives you 1.6. So you would expect about two men to be chosen on the team of three. And that makes sense because when we looked at our probability distribution graph, that was the highest probability, so if you're going to take an average, that would have more weight. And that's the end of this unit.